These are important Logic Pro settings you need to change right now. Hi, I'm Sides. Welcome to my channel. Let's jump right into Logic Pro. The first setting you need to change if you have a mouse like I do, I highly recommend getting one. You can get one on Amazon for just a couple dollars. And really you want a right mouse click because if you have one, you can press command comma, go to general, go to editing, and then right where it says right mouse button, you can select is assignable to a tool. Now, if you see up here, we have three tools in the toolbox. So I like to keep it on the scissor tool. So now if I click here, bam, cut, bam, cut. If I click here, bam, cut, bam, cut. Super useful. And then if you want to access the second tool, all you have to do is hold down command. Boom. The next Logic Pro setting that you must change is if you press command com again to open up project settings, make sure you're on general, editing, and then go to fade tool click zone. Now if you hover over the top right corner of an audio track, this little icon will appear and then you can add a fade out or you can add a fade in. Control click on it or right click on it if you don't have the right tool set to a scissor. Then you can select slow down and you can have it sound like this. And, the... and on this side, you can do control click and you can have it speed up. And that would sound like this. To think I was good enough. This is the next setting that you need to change. So on default, all of the audio tracks will be this color blue and all of the MIDI tracks will be this color green. But when I create a new track, doesn't matter if it's audio or a uh, software instrument track, I want it to be a different color. Here's how you do it. You're gonna press command comma, go over to view, go over to tracks, and now where it says track color, make it auto six to 24 or 96 colors. I like to use 96 colors. Now, if I click and add new track up here, let's say I wanna do sophomore instrument tracks. Let's put 20 so you can see. Look, they're all different colors. Let's say if I drag um, a MIDI into that track, check it out. It'll change all the colors. Pretty cool. The next setting that you should change is something that annoys me so much. So now if I have the metronome on and I'm just playing my track, the metronome plays, but I don't want it to play every single time I play my track. I just want it to play when I'm recording. So all you have to do is right click on your metronome, turn off simple mode, then right click again and select unselect click while playing. So now it's gonna look like this and it's only going to play when you're recording. Watch, no metronome, but if I hit R to record, and now a metronome. Here's another thing that bugs me so much. So if I play in the middle of a chord, of a MIDI chord, no sound comes out until the start of the next MIDI chord. But if I open up project settings by pressing option P, go over to MIDI, go over to chase, select notes. Now listen to what happens. It plays. Here it is one more time. It plays. This next one is also so, 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 so helpful. If you like automating lots of cool parameters, but you hate searching for it in this little box, this is how you can do it. Go over to mix, then select auto select automation parameter in read mode. Now let's say I wanna put an EQ on my vocal. All I have to do is open up an EQ and select what I want to automate. So I wanna automate this, the low cut frequency, and now you can see in this box, it actually put the parameter right there. So if I wanted to automate this, it would put that. If I wanna automate this, it would put that. But I wanna automate this. Now if I just put in my points. I'm a fool to think I was good enough good enough to earn your love how cool is that
Another setting you should change is if you double click on a MIDI track or press P, you go into the piano roll. And then if you go over to view, note labels, bam. Now you have the notes right on the MIDI. So I can see this is G4. So that means this is G on octave four. And if I move this down by pressing shift option arrow key down, it is on G3, the octave three. So now you can see all the chords and you can line things up accordingly. And also one little quick thing here. If you highlight all these notes, it will show you over here what chord it is. So that's a little useful thing. And the last setting that I think you should change, if you go over to record, and then you select overlap MIDI record, you actually have a bunch of different settings that you can choose from. So if your cycle is on, and you record in here, right now it's set to merge. So basically if I record, it's gonna record right on top of the MIDI. Check it out. Basically it just put it right over it, which might be something that you wanna do. But if you select create take folder, now let's say I'm doodling around on the harp, but I didn't hit record. Okay, and I'm like, God, I really liked one of those things. All I have to do is press Shift R, bam, there they are, and they were broken up into separate take folders. So I can pick my favorite. Pretty useful trick. And I wanna show you one more bonus setting. I like having a little bit more space for my project. So I can just wait for this icon, and then I can drag it out, and you can actually drag out more space for your project. There you have it, a few settings that you should change right now. If you want instructions on how to build the best Logic Pro template, you can download a free workbook linked in the caption. My name is Sides, please subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting a video every Tuesday and Thursday and I'll see you next time.